Starfield is Bethesda's first new video game IP in over 25 years. And because of this, there seems to be a lot of hype surrounding the game and hoping that it's going to be the next big gaming phenomenon in the community. But there are a few reasons why I just don't believe that this is going to be the case with Starfield and why Starfield is ultimately just going to be another good gaming experience, but not the best one that we're, we've seen by a long shot. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be proven wrong and for Starfield to become the next big gaming phenomenon that we see in our community but I just don't see that happening. I don't think Starfield warrants the level of hype that it's gotten. I feel like we're sort of entering a Cyberpunk 2077 type situation where we're reaching astronomical levels of hype and expectations are getting too high and we need to sort of taper them back a bit, especially now since the game is only a couple days from its full release. So today I wanted to talk about why I'm not excited for Starfield. One of the reasons why I don't believe Starfield is going to be able to live up to the astronomical levels of hype that it's been getting is because it's already disappointed a lot of its fans and a lot of the people following it. The fans following Starfield's release cycle and development cycle have been noting things like the poor combat, the game not actually allowing players to explore a thousand planets, or the whole thousand planets headline kind of being misleading at best, the general main narrative being a bit bland, even having your movement on the actual planet you land on restricted to a certain zone and having to go back up into orbit to enter a new zone on the same planet. My point is, a lot of the people who seem to previously be excited for Starfield, myself included, find themselves being hopeful skeptics at best and having the wind taken out of their sails by a lot of the news that's just been coming out about Starfield, especially from Bethesda directly. And a lot of the skeptics like me don't take Todd Howard's word for it that everything that he says is going to be absolutely 100% true within this game. When you break down the initial gameplay trailer that Starfield released for, people were quickly blown away by the discovery of being able to land on over a thousand planets at once, or the idea of being able to explore up to that many different worlds within Starfield. I was excited too. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to explore that many planets? You know, who wouldn't want to be able to just explore an entire galaxy and see a thousand different worlds and all the different possibilities that entails from quest lines to different species you encounter to different flora, fauna. I mean, the possibilities are endless and the applications for what someone could do in that big of a sandbox environment, the possibilities are near endless for that sort of thing. And this idea of being able to explore a thousand different unique planets was almost too good to be true because it was. I said that a lot of people were skeptical about this, that, you know, there's probably going to be some procedural generation like a No Man's Sky situation involved where there's not actually 1,000 different unique worlds and a lot of them are probably going to end up being empty husks or empty shells that you just end up being able to park your ship on and there's not actually a lot going on there. Like, you're really just using the, the planet you're on as a parking spot. That's mainly it. There's going to be very few planets that actually have quests going on on them being a planet that actually supports life and actually has an environment that can support an ecosystem on it and surprise surprise todd howard came out back in june a couple months ago and said that actually there's only a hundred unique worlds that have life on them which means the other 900 worlds that they sold the product as having a thousand worlds that means over 90 percent of the planets that we are able to explore don't have life on them which means there's probably not a lot going on there you know, there, there might be the occasional like, oh, go fetch this material or go mine these materials from this planet. Or there's an old wreckage on this on this ship that was crashed on this uh, deserted planet over here. You know, I see something like that happening in Starfield, but I don't see certainly not the main quest line going on on a vacant planet and probably not a whole lot of side quest content going on as well. It could be that the devs left room for further expansions or DLCs in the future with building in that many different planets, or maybe they're having the mindset of, you know, we want the community to have a space where they can mod stuff in to these different worlds. I could see that being a possibility as well. But the idea that a thousand unique planets and you know they're all unique they're all different they're all they all have something cool about them that not one planet is like the previous one before it it seems like that idea was a pipe dream and it seems like bethesda really misled the audience about that going off even further in terms of being able to explore a planet is the problem where we recently found out from a leaker that you're not actually able to go from one end of the planet to another just by walking across it or just by traversing it not with your ship. You actually are hard limited 
by how much surface area you can navigate while on the land or while touching down on the surface of a planet. For example, like if you wanted to go say 23 kilometers from your ship and say that that's the theoretical limit zone of how far you can travel, beyond 23 kilometers, the world around you will no longer spawn or at least it will no longer allow you to go further from your ship. You instead have to go back into your ship, you have to go up into orbit and you have to go back down to a different area of the planet and land with your ship in another spot. And that to me seems really ridiculous. You've probably seen other content creators talking about this. You've probably seen them commenting on what an asinine mechanic this is to have in a game. But, you know, I can't overstate how immersion breaking that is where you can no longer go to this one specific area that just happens to be out of bounds for a game. I mean, this was supposed to be you can go anywhere, you can do anything. That's the message of the game. That's what the marketing of the game led everyone to believe and to not be able to just walk across the planet and when i say walk across the planet i don't mean literally you're walking across the entire surface of the planet i mean just you can explore different areas without having to go back into your ship and having to move it constantly and that seems like a real disappointment and bethesda should have been upfront about that to make matters even worse it sounds like you can't even use a vehicle or a mount or anything like that besides traveling on foot or your jetpack thank god for the jetpack like at least it's not all bad um but it sounds like you can't even use a vehicle or a mount in that way to make traversal a bit easier. It sounds like your ship is going to be your main point of traversal, even like really simple stuff, like just from moving from point A to point B on the same planet. And then there's the combat. The combat in Starfield is fine, but that's it. It's just fine. I hesitate to say mid, but that's the word that comes to mind because all we've seen so far is, you know, choppy shooting. Pretty much what we've seen before, it looks like Fallout in space to me. It looks like Fallout 4 just in a slightly refreshed game engine. And it looks like the, you know, it looks like the frame rate is not the best, but we'll get to that in a minute. But it looks like nothing unique. And I think the whole selling point, again, it's it's that this was going to be the new big gaming ip that bethesda was making such a big deal about because it's our first new idea within 25 years and we're really happy this is something we've wanted to do for decades now it seems like they're just deriving this sort of combat system based off of stuff they've already done and i'm not saying that they had to reinvent the wheel but it looks like that the combat system has no identity of its own it looks like almost that it was just ripped from fallout 4 or fallout 76 and it looks like it was just dumbed down slightly if that makes sense because there's not a lot of recoil to the guns there's not a lot of gun action you know we have i have yet to see the weapon variety like how many guns there are available in in the game but i have to wait and see to make a decision about that to, whether the variety of guns makes up for the combat and i don't think it will i think that the combat could have used you know there, there's something missing you know what i mean there's there's the secret sauce is is just not there like it's missing that secret ingredient that gives Starfield an identity of its own. And it the more I see of this game, the more and more footage I see, the more screenshots I see, the more news that comes out about it, it sounds like, you know, people really set their expectations sky high, which, you know, maybe that's on believing the hype train, believing the marketing that Bethesda put out. And maybe that's an error on the user's end, or maybe that's an error on Bethesda's end, probably a bit of both. Regardless, it should not inspire companies like Bethesda or Microsoft even greater, rather, to, to just choose to not innovate because it's the safe option and i'm really tired of companies choosing the safe option if it means that we get like a soulless husk of a game not saying that starfield is one but saying that you know would it kill them to have an original idea or would it kill them to actually try to make an original work or blow a concept out to where hey you know we have a new system here we have a new combat system here it's not just fallout in space it's not just skyrim in space at least you can build your own ship, and yes, you can bet your ass that I'm going to try my best to recreate the Treasure Planet Space Pirate Ship as soon as I can in this game. And lastly, beyond the combat, beyond the exploration, beyond the dast expectations of all of what we've been led to believe of this game up to this point, there's addressing how the game actually runs. And I'll talk about the elephant in the room first, you know. Like, Bethesda just straight up came out and said that Starfield is going to be locked to 30 FPS on consoles, and you know what more can be said about that i feel like it's not just me that has this belief but 30 fps on console in 2023 is just unacceptable with the power of the series x there is literally no excuse for that you know and if it's 
the idea that like oh it's a bethesda game it probably wasn't gonna run stable anyway well is that really an excuse you know yeah it's gonna probably run better on pc and it probably always was going to run better on pc but this is an xbox title you know this is for this is for xbox players and for pc players you know this should be able to hold at least a solid 60 fps on console and i think you know i feel bad for xbox players in that because they really xbox players really needed a win this time starfield really needed to be you know it really needed to be a a drop in the bucket a drop in the hat it needed to be like chef's kiss like master of the universe they really needed a win here and it looks like starfield is just going to be another okay game it'll be probably good but it won't be great i don't think at least not from everything that i've been seeing so far and the whole 30 fps thing on xbox i realize is probably due to a limitation on bethesda's part due to the fact that they have to have full feature parity between xbox series x and s that's a requirement that microsoft enforces so i understand that bethesda is probably limited in how far they can push the series x if the series s can't keep up with it i understand that also reflects poorly on microsoft in that the gaming experience for all the people who shelled out the extra money to buy a series x you know they're held back because the weakest link the series s can't keep up with it so they have to have the same lower quality experience rather than a greater one for paying additional dollars for it and all this is to say like i'm probably biased in this because you know this is this is a requirement enforced by microsoft and that probably that's a requirement they have for all their games that they release on their platforms but i can't help but feel like this was especially hard for bethesda to meet because it's a bethesda title don't get me wrong i'm a huge fan of the fallout games minus 76 i've been playing elder scrolls 4 and 5 ever since they came out and i replay them every few years just because i love to go back into those worlds but i don't pretend to like any of the games of these franchises and not acknowledge their track records with bugs and poor performance i mean this is bethesda we're talking about both the gamebryo engines and the creation engines that they use to make all of their games including starfield haven't been exactly kind to them in the quality control department we'll just have to wait and see if they've done a better job polishing this latest product that they're about to push out. I know that I've sounded like I'm hoping or even betting that Starfield is going to be terrible, but that's just not true. Space is such a cool setting for an RPG, and I would love for Bethesda to bring out Starfield, like, full bore out of the gate and have it be a game of the year contender. I would love for that to happen. And even though I criticize Bethesda's games and I criticize all of the Fallout games, I criticize the Elder Scrolls games, I feel like they earn the criticism that I give them. I really want Starfield to be the next big space RPG, but we'll just have to wait and see if that comes true. Do I think this game will be amazing? Probably not. Do I think the game will still be an enjoyable experience for those who try it? Yeah, I do. Personally, I feel like this game is going to play really similarly to The Outer Worlds that came out a few years back. And I love The Outer Worlds. It was hilarious. It was such a good time. It was basically like satire. Like, it was Fallout New Vegas in space from what I can gather from it. And I love that. It still managed to feel like its own world. It still managed to feel like its own product. Like, exploring Halcy the Halcyon colony was really fun. So if this is just another, you know, Outer Worlds type spin-off space RPG before the Outer Worlds 2 comes out in a few years, then sign me up for it. I'm here for it. That's all for this video, guys. If you like the video and you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. We publish brand new content every day, so there's always something new for you to watch. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.